Let's take a look at the Imperial Shock Trooper released by Sideshow. So this is a Sideshow version, not to be confused with the Hot Toys version of the Coruscant Guard that was recently released. You do see the Imperial Shock Trooper in Revenge of the Sith towards the end of the movie where they're with Emperor Palpatine looking for Anakin and then bringing Anakin uh, to the basically hospital in Coruscant. There is a lot to read here so you might want to pause it and at the bottom it does say what accessories it comes with. And here's a figure out of the box. You see the trooper, the blaster, the blaster rifle, and another set of hands, and the display base. So far the detail on the figure is awesome. The weathering and all the scratches and I guess you could say tar marks from Mustafar make this figure look awesome. So let's take a look at the blaster. Nice detail all around on both sides. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of weathering. It's fairly clean. Now, one thing about this blaster compared to the Hot Toys, the stock is able to go all the way to the back of the blaster. Unlike the Hot Toys where it can't do that. Now for the blaster rifle. This thing has a lot of nice detail also. Uh, un compared to the blaster, this does have more weathering on it. I know it might be somewhat hard to see with the lights, but most of the blast rifles that comes with these sideshow figures, they're about all the same. And it does come here with the two fisted hands. Here's the display base. This figure was released in 2009. And this does come with a waist grabber instead of the crotch holder. Here's a closer look at the details of the figure. All the scratches in the armor and the black marks, like I said, would uh, kind of be like tar or ashes because this figure was on Mustafar. The only thing I was surprised at, there's no real weathering on the feet. But there's some nice details on the side of the figure. Now let's take a look at the back of the figure. Now I was a little disappointed to find that there wasn't a whole lot of weathering on the back of this figure. There is some on the back of the legs, but that's mostly as far as it went. Um, I don't know if that's just how things were done um, with the figures back in t the early 2000s. Now one thing that I noticed with this figure is the undersuit seems kind of like a pleather material. Let's take a look at articulation. The head is on a dumbbell joint. It looks down pretty well. It doesn't really look up that much. The head will swivel to the left and to the right. And it does have nice tilt. With the restriction of the undersuit, the arm can rotate only so far. It will go back a little bit. 
not bad still and it can extend out about that far not quite 90 degrees the elbow will bend about 90 degrees the hand will swivel all the way around and it can bend forward or back or you can rotate it to where it can go up and down there is a bicep swivel and a butterfly joint the body will also twist from side to side there's not really a whole lot of ab crunch or back bend the leg will rotate forward to about 90 and we'll go to the side pretty good not bad it won't really go back that much the leg will bend to 90 a little past 90 the foot will go up this much kind of flex down pretty good it will rotate so the articulation of the foot is pretty good so here you have the figure with the blaster i am using the display base to hold them up um, this is a previously owned figure and i bought it uh, basically on the secondary market um, I actually got it from order 66 toys the joints are kind of loose here is the second pose where he's holding the blast rifle in his right hand and in left hand has the blaster he has it out as if he's walking towards his target and shooting it. So far the figure is not bad for its age. I do like it. And that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, give me a like, leave a comment. Y'all be awesome to one another. Enough said.